Welcome to Four Seas, One Family. I'm here talking with a longtime friend here in Taiwan. He's been living in Taiwan for quite a long time. And we're going to talk about our experiences, well, related to Taiwan in some ways. How you doing, JD? How you doing, dude? What's happening, James Dean? What's up? Hey. Hey, James, I'm doing good. Thanks. How Thanks you doing? Yeah, thank, sorry about the little technical delays. There's always something going on here, and all, you know. But, you know, give a little brief little introducing to yourself and um, how long you've been out here in Taiwan. Uh, well, I come from Canada, and I've been in Taiwan for, uh, I guess, 20 years now. So it uh, goes by in a blink. Um, I've, had, I've worn a, a couple different hats while I've been here, but uh, primarily I've been in the, in the education game. Um, so uh, right now I'm the uh, I'm the head teacher of a of a of a private high school, and uh, yeah, and then I do the I do some adult teaching and stuff on the sides and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's basically me in a nutshell. Yeah, fun, fun. Yep. Since since we're we come our host nations, our home nations, I to say, right? You know, I'm from the lower part of that 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 continent down mm -hmm. here in in America and stuff like that. But you know, a lot of things are going on lately. You know, we're gonna talk a little bit more later. You know, we got things going out going on out here with the neighbors next door and. Um, and what's going on in Ukraine, of course, kind of affects our life out here in some ways. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of shaky, but we have to deal with it and um, talk to people back home about it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just tell me, I mean, you've been out here that long and, you know, you, in, in some ways, you and I both have invested a lot of our personal life out here. You know, I'm also an educator. You know, what kind of like, kind of like, what makes you stay in Taiwan besides, you know, the name Taiwan? Well, I mean, I think Taiwan's a, I mean, it's a great place, right? It's a, it's a, it's, it's very liberal. It's, um, you know, it's a, it's a democratic country. Uh, it's very fast paced, which is what I like. Um, so a lot of times when, when people ask me like, Hey, do I miss home? You know, of course, certain, certain things I miss, you know, family and friends and, Maybe some food, the odd, the odd things like that. Um, but it's the pace, the pace of things, you know. But like when I when I go back to Canada or even in the in the U.S., unless I'm in maybe like a big city like L.A. or New York or something, it's uh, it's very slow, you know. And I I I appreciate the the fast paceness of of Taiwan. So so I think that that definitely keeps me here. I mean, <laughs> you know. It's a lot of freedom too, right? Like you, um, you know, I feel really independent here. I feel like I can do what I want to do, um, you know. And there's practical things too, like the cost of living is quite low. And, mm -hmm. um, I've, I, over 20 years, I've built up some good friends, uh, friendships, and uh, yeah, it's it's just an, it's an all around good place, I think. Well, you know, we we do have uh, we 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 do have a, a a sense of privilege out here because we are different in many ways. But you and I both, we've made the we 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 actually made a very strong attempt to actually uh, learn about the culture, the language, and the history of of, of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. um, do you get many questions from people back home about you know a you know you? you you have to. You probably maybe just like me. I'm in Taiwan, not Thailand. Do you get any questions mm -hmm. like that? I, I think that you know that's that's the running joke, right? Yeah. Thailand, not Th Taiwan, not Thailand. Um, I think it's more so now. Is is more like oh, you're in China. Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I think that is more common now uh, than uh, than the latter. Um, so. Yeah, when there's like geopolitical things going on, uh, you know, I, I get questions about like, oh, like, how, how's that? How's COVID in China or mm -hmm. something like that? Um, so I think there's a bigger association with Taiwan being a part of China still, um, you know, and I can I can beat my chest all I want and say, hey, wait a minute, we're, we're, we're an independent country. But I think it, it's... Um, you know, it, it continues to happen. So. Why, why, why do we as, we as long-term expats in Taiwan, we say we are an independent country? We, we are not necessarily all of us citizens, but we, we, we tend to say that a lot, especially, you know, long-term expats. And I brought up this, that question, just because now Taiwan's name is now way out in the front. 
for mm-hmm. obvious reasons, you know, we will talk about later. But it, this is something that I noticed about long term expats out here who actually took the initiative to learn about Taiwan, not just to pass through here on, you know, and carrying their backpack. And, you know, this is something that I've noticed. And you ever thought about why you, we, we, we refer to Taiwan in that way? You know, we're in, why? Hmm. It's a really interesting question, James, you know, and I don't think consciously I said we, I didn't say that consciously. You know? mm. um, uh, I think you know, like when you when you stay somewhere for such a long period of time, you, you sort of start to think that, mm. uh, you know, like this is your place and this is your home. I, I noticed that um, for me anyway, like when I when I do visit home, there's a I don't, I don't. I wouldn't say it's reverse culture shock because I don't think. I don't think it's that. But it's uh, there's a there's a part of me that's especially as as so let's say for example let's say I, I go back for a month let's say I'm in North America for a month when that month is winding down like I'm really ready to go home you know to go home <laughs> and so I think when I say you know we are I think that's because I I I truly feel like Taiwan is my home now you know well so, yeah. No, no, I, I, I do understand it. And, you know, I, I say it and I, I trip over my tongue, but I don't feel uncomfortable saying it. But I wonder how a lot of, uh, you know, uh, local people in Taiwan feel when I say something like that. But I've never had it come in. Yes, I did one time, you know, as a joke. But, you know, let's talk. Let me let me ask a question in, in this sense before we go into the meat and potatoes of the conversation. How do you see your your home nation from afar. I mean, there's a there's a lot of things going on in Canada as as well as the United States. And mm-hmm. believe me, I can just we can just as far as the United States go, we can just there's so there's endless number of things we can talk about. But you know, we had this uh, major uh, ra- rallying of uh, trucks up there in Canada. I mean, mm-hmm. how do you vo- view that from being out here? And, and and to put on top of that. How do you view world, the, the situation, what's going on in the world and in other places from this location where you are? Well, to your to your first question, I think uh, I, I want to be I, I want to be wary of of stereotypes, <laughs> but I think I think that there's my view of Canada. My, my Canada is 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 a, is a place that's more maybe uh, more liberal and more accepting, and uh, you know we don't have those like sure i mean, like our our politics are, are probably uh partisan just like the united states but it doesn't seem to have that that bitter two sides you know like like the united states does anyway, i'm just saying my perception are you trying to bite your tongue right <laughs> well I'm, I'm trying to get to the point of of like with this uh this trucker a protest that you're referring to, I think that opened my eyes a bit um, to see that, oh, wait a minute, there is quite a strong divide, you know? And I also saw that w- with the um, with COVID and the vaccines, you know, with, with people being anti-vaxxers or, or pro-vaxxers or, um, or pro-vaccine. Uh, it, I think I was unaware because I've been away for, you know, so long. I was unaware of that divide. And I think the, the, the divide that I suggested a minute ago does, didn't exist in Canada, but does in the United States. Mm-hmm. But in fact, yeah, it's there. It's it does exist in Canada, and that and it was really um, it was really there for people to see, um, especially with like you mentioned the the, the trucker protest. Um, you know, there's there's people who, especially in Ottawa, where where it was sort of uh, culminated, there was there was a the people, the residents there, they they felt really inconvenienced by it. Um, they they wanted the government or the police to step in to, sh- to 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 shut that down. But then there's maybe people, let's say on the west coast. I mean, maybe more like Alberta area, mm-hmm. um, that were like, you know, hey, uh, you know, power to the people, and this is a, this is a a lawful protest, and like, you know, support your support your local truckers, etc. You know, and I, I don't want to take sides, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have my own opinion, I suppose, but I I just think there's the, the divide is there. Do you feel much disconnect? Uh, certainly there's there's that. Um, but I think there's also this, 
you know, this convenience of not, I don't have to deal with it. I'm not there, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I, I don't want to uh, be the person in you know, head in the sand, but I mean, it, you know, the, the trucker's process didn't really inconvenience me all that much. Right. Um, but it's, it's there for everyone to see. And I think it's, it's rare, especially for Canada to make international news. <laughs> and, and that was sort of, that was front and center. Right. So for sure, that was, that was also interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, us being outside when we go back home, we get comments from friends and family, you know, James, our, both our names are James, right? Uh, James, you you don't know what's, what it is like, like, you know, what's going on here. You can't feel what's going on here. Yes, it's true. I'm not there. But the thing is, what strikes me the most from living outside the nation and living other nations is how I now see the, my home nation from the from the eyes of people who, well, in some cases, look towards my home nation as a place for inspiration, to find creativity or the impetus for that. And now I'm seeing people's minds or or, or um, opinions changing, right? And it, it, it's kind of shocking because a lot of them come up to me and say, James, what's going on with What's going on? With, what's going on in your nation and stuff like that? And it makes me kind of choked up. And I, I just wonder if other expats have also experienced. I'm talking long term expats who or foreign nationals have to be careful with that word expat, right? You know, living overseas, do they do they also feel the same thing? Because you know, it's it's kind of shaky sometimes when you see your home from the eyes of other people. Mm. Yeah, I would say that you know. Being next to the United States, you know, the the biggest superpower, the biggest, the number one, the honcho, you know, the one that, that garners all the media attention, Canada sort of, it, it really like, it, it just slides by, you know. So I think a lot of times when I'm talking about global media, and I think that there's a stereotype about, for example, have you ever run into an American who's never traveled versus an American who has traveled? Oh, Yeah. There's a stereotype about that, right? Mm-hmm. About their views and about how they see their, how they see their country or how they see their position in the world, and so uh, I don't think that stereotype is as prevalent about Canadians, but only because America is so big and and we get our we get drowned out, right? So people don't usually say it's something like, "Oh, hey, the, look at that." Uh, there's a Canadian who's never traveled, and there's a Canadian who's well traveled, and look at the difference. Do you ever have you ever heard anyone say that before? Well, I, I look at it as most of us, most of us in our home nation. I'm talking about you being Canadian, me being African American. We are really the foreigners, but that's a whole different topic, even of our own land, because you know there's history to talk about. Mm-hmm. But being America, being big, I, I mean. Maybe uh, as far as um, how would you say global politics and opinions, you know, this is which which is which kind of like rattles me. You know, part of part of the reason why I also bring you here is for you even to ask me questions of, of my opinions about certain things, because this is a, a, a chance to exchange um, thoughts and ideology, uh, either learnt out here or we brought out here or developed by living overseas. Because when you're able to see your home nation and the way people live in both places, you find out there's no absolute right or wrong way to view things or see things, but there are things as morals that are totally 100% just one, one thing, moral value. How you do that, how you get to it, how you, whether you go through your God or belief, maybe having a different name or a different style or, 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 or procedure, there's only one moral values. And that's what I've learned out here. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, as far as lo- looking back on it and going and, and and saying like, hey, am I am I proud of my country or do I like what's going on there right now? Like, I'm pretty. This is just my my personal opinion, but I'm pretty okay with the current administration. So uh, Justin Trudeau, like I I'm I'm down with him. The, he I I care about environmental issues, so that's it's a high on his agenda. So I'm down with that. Um, and, you know, like, I know things like carbon tax is really unpopular in Canada, but again, like, I, I'm down with those things. So, um, so as far as that goes, as far as the government goes, I don't, I don't 
look at it and go, you know, tisk tisk. Mm -hmm. Might, you know, if 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 let's say <laughs> if let's say I was an American and Donald Trump was in the office and like I wouldn't maybe I wouldn't be as as uh, as pleased to say like hey you know I'm this is my country you know mm -hmm. uh, so as far as just my my personal opinion goes like I'm okay with with what's going on in that regard um, I I don't like to see the division but you know it's going to happen no matter what so. Um, but as a general rule, I'm I'm pretty okay with Canada's path right now. Me, me, me personally, but mm -hmm. I know that it's not uh, you know it's not everyone's cup of tea right now. It's a minority government in Canada, not a majority. Uh, historically speaking, minority governments don't last in our country. It's not like Europe where they really make minority governments last for a long time. Mm -hmm. Let's say Italy, for example, because they they have no they have no other option if they want the government to function. So. So historically speaking, Canada's minority governments traditionally fail, um, and then there's an election called, and then and they, you know it goes back and forth until they have a majority. But right now, um, the Liberal Party and the and the NDP are doing pretty well, um, you know, mm -hmm. perceivably doing pretty well, uh, keeping the, the 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 wheels rolling. So. Wow. Um, Forgive me of all my ignorance for, for not spending enough of time and really learning more about the neighbors up, you know, above the United States, you know, in Canada, even though it's a wonderful place to visit, some, mm. one of the beautiful places to visit. But here's something to think about. You know, you have people, well, people from, especially out here out in Asia where we are, looking towards, looking to the West for inspiration, hope, or, or the search for uh, certain freedom, artistic freedoms and stuff like that. Living out here, did, did, did you ever have the, the urge to at least go back home to, and, and tell friends and family that there's things that we here can learn from other places? I mean, have you ever tried to encourage friends and family back home to actually, I've, I've, we mentioned about, you know, have you ever met a, a local person, say, back in the States or Canada has never traveled? Have you done much to try to encourage people back home to, well, you know, go outside, you know, learn about other peoples and cultures? Have you done much like, you know, anything like that? No, I mean, I don't... I, I, to be to be honest, I don't think I've I've really you know tried to force, or well, not force, but I not to really like you know to to this, the idea of, of international travel or or, or, or things like that. Um, but what I would say, just from a personal point of view, is like when I was um, this is going way back, but when I was in in uh, in high school, I remember they I, folks would call me Captain Canada all the time. I was I was. Uh, you know, just I was Mr. Canada. And I always thought Canada was the best, the best, the best lakes, the best mountains, the best food, the best this, the best that. And, uh, you know, I, I rode my bicycle across Canada uh, back in uh, 1999, uh, things like that. You know, um, I've been to every province and territory wow. several times. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I was a kid, my, my dad used to say, you know, you really have to travel your own country before you can travel anywhere else. And that's really saying something because hmm. in Canada, like it's <laughs> the West Coast and the East Coast, really different, you know, mm -hmm. central Canada, northern part of Canada. Um, so I would say I, I might not have done those things that you had mentioned, but what the travel has done for me personally was to realize like, hey, Canada's pretty great, but there's a lot of great places out there. And so I think that's what I've learned. You know, I've, I think I've visited maybe 20 countries now mm -hmm. um, and uh, lived in a couple of different places as well. So, um, yeah, you know, like I, I, now I think, you know, like this place has the, the, the coolest rice terraces or this place has the, the, the most impressive uh, street food or, or whatever it is, you know. But it's, it, that's what the, the, the traveling and, and, and living abroad, that's, that's what it's given to me is some perspective about like, oh, you know what? Every place is pretty cool. Yeah, every place is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 It just, you just have to search for it or be willing to, and, uh, to search for the coolness of a place. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it changes you, it changes, it can change a person so deeply that it's, it's, it's almost hard to explain. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to pull 
back down to what's, re what's recently happening in the world t today. And, you know, the things that, is, that, that we hear about every day now is what's going on in Europe and in, in, with Russia and uh, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we, we're out here in Taiwan and um, Taiwan has a, a certain eye on what's going on in Ukraine right now. And, Absolutely. you know, it, it, it's it's probably hard for our friends and family back home to see it. But for those who are tuned into what's going on out here, they may be, uh, how would you say, a little bit worried about our situation out here. Mm -hmm. So how do you see it so far in a general term? You can start off with for a particular, what do you, how, how do you see the events going on right now in Ukraine? Well, I mean, that's it's terrible, right? It's 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 absolutely terrible that the this you know it's an unprovoked war. It's 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 senseless violence. Um, you know, the, the the justification for war is really is really awful. Um, you know, like I think that as far as Taiwan is concerned, I guess like. You know, I'm sure you, you, you're familiar with this. You know, there's this, there's this constant threat of the, of China, mm -hmm. you know, having uh, this potential to to take over the the island or to attack the island or, or whatever. Um, this threat, this this existential threat, um, and you know, especially as a longtime expat you or a foreigner, you, you can just sort of brush it off, like yeah, yeah, you know, I've heard this, I've heard this before, I've heard this before, but uh, for me. What's going on in Ukraine, I think, has really tweaked my interests, and it made me really think, like, yeah, we, we really need to pay attention here. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I think that if Russia is able to succeed, uh, or goes unchecked, or, uh, you know, any of those scenarios where, where Russia comes out um, on top, or, or, or they, their agenda is met, I think that's going to embolden China, mm -hmm. right? And so that's bad for Taiwan, right? right? Um, so I think for the very first time, maybe ever in my 20 years here, I'm really, I'm really paying attention uh, for those reasons. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things going on going on right now on um, on and here on, on YouTube, for example, and, and other uh, platforms about as a foreign national, you know, what would you do if if you know the nation is attacked? What would you do? But you know, I I, I don't want to put that question out on you right now in a moment because I I have my own personal opinions and you do too, and we have all different concerns. But it is something to bring awareness to. The fact that the attack, this terrible, ruthless attack that uh, Russia has placed on the Ukraine. Now, I worked in the area. You know, I've, I've worked on movies in the area in Ukraine and, and, and Romania in that area. I, I know people there. I have uh, two friends in in uh, Moscow that had that, you know send me messages on how they feel, and they're not down with it mm. because they have a global perspective. What bothers me is the type of propaganda that's going in, going on, excuse me, within um, Russia that's actually causing some people who, in, in Chinese, they say, um, how would you say, the, uh, the, uh, the, the silent major majority, you know, out there that are afraid to say anything, but they have to go along with it just to keep peace in their lives because they're not able to leave the country, you know, and, mm -hmm. and they're leaving they're leaving. They're going to Georgia. You know, they, they're leaving Russia by droves. You know, and, yeah. and you know this is out in the news. You no, know, you know, uh, people that I know who, who are in the IT business in in Russia, they, they 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 already left. But what bothers me is how I see certain narratives are able to be carried out within Russia, and those Russians who are educated outside also feel helpless. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing that's happening next door to us, and. You know, it just takes one one mistake to trip that wire, so the neighbors next door can go into their endemic state just because they have a cultural tie, or they feel they have ownership over over Taiwan. This mm -hmm. is what is making me get on my toes. But for for people like you and I, you know, who probably hear this a lot now, we are living through it, and I think that's the difference. Yeah. Well, I mean, like as far as the 
you mentioned about the, the the internal propaganda in Russia. I think that there's a a large percentage. I think I I, I think I I read sixty percent, but I, I I don't want to say the statistic if it's wrong. But um, that especially of an older population that rely on on state run media for their news, right? So they they're not getting they don't have independent sources. They don't they don't have an outside perspective. The social media has been shut down by and large. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know that's perpetuating this. Um, I don't know, support, I guess, for Putin. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and as you mentioned, like I, I, I think I read an article a couple of days ago about the brain drain that's going on in Russia right now with uh, intellectuals and, and professionals leaving the country in droves, as you mentioned. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's a similar thing that happens in China as well, where it depends on the demographic that's, that's absorbing that news, right? Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's some parallels. There's some similarities, for sure. Even we, I mean, every place has propaganda to a point. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is to keep things, when people say educate people, it's, it's, it's the objective education that people need, to, people need to build up, which is really universal. And that's something that once you get it or once you're able to grasp the nuances, things become undeniable, such as simple mm-hmm. things as human rights. You know, mm-hmm. our homes all have problems because, you know, there's no way to, you know, utopia. It's just not what it is. But the whole mm-hmm. point is people like you and I to be able to take what we learn from over, from places that we live or exp- experiences that we have living outside our home nation and use what we learn from our host nation to share that people have a lot more in common than they think. That's what mm-hmm. I, I, I see. Now, this is a question that probably take people like you and I, well, trip us up the most. It's like, what can we do at this point? Because me personally, I I have an urge to show people that, like I said before, we have a lot more in common than we think, whether that's through education, contacts. I, I mean, I've been in places in China where I've never seen a black person before, mm-hmm. you know? And once you able to break down these little barriers that's, in some cases, been placed on purpose in front of us. You really find out that some of the things that we've seen, even our, in our home nation, may have been f- false narratives and stuff like that. Has anything ever happened to you in that way, where you're put in a situation and you find out things were not the way you would, what you, what you were taught back back home, and you learned overseas? Um. Well, I think. I think it's maybe the opposite. It's or not maybe not the opposite, but I think there was a there was a lack of exposure. I, I would say. I, well, sometimes I, I tell my uh, my students about the places where I grew up. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I remember there was there was one black family uh, on you know down the street on the corner. There was one Asian family. They ran a convenience store. Very stereotypical. Oh yes. Um, and uh, there was there was not there was there was not a, ver- a, lot, a large variety of, of, of ethnic foods or uh, or culture to be had. It was very like you know potatoes and and uh, meat and potatoes and and, and you know cornfields and, and and white folks, right? So I would say that yeah, it's, it wasn't so much that I that I I developed stereotypes. I think I just I just didn't have the exposure. Um, so I think that's what travel and, and living abroad has really helped me to understand is is uh, is the wealth of uh, of, you know, of culture that's available around the world. Um, and that's the purpose. That's the reason why I, I I put this question out there first because I want to, you know, get into, maybe I should have brought it up earlier about what have you learned out here or doing your travels in, in these twenty different nations that would cause you that caused you to change you that changed you the most how about that that's what i'm trying to get out what's changed what's caused you to change the most that maybe you wouldn't have changed if you were still in your home nation hmm. i think there's i think i don't know if it's going to be cliche to say that or not but there, i think that like a sense of humility and uh and like having a having a chip on your shoulder hmm. that's something that I, I i definitely brought here to taiwan um and 
like I think there was, there's times where it has benefited me because I've I've often I've usually been in a in a position of of like of a management position or like I've been in a position of in Taiwan where I'm like I'm in charge of people or I'm the I'm I'm a director of of some kind of uh, operation or or something like that and so I think there's the there's that confidence that that um, that has helped me to achieve those those th those levels. Mm -hmm. but, then, but then I also think like there was a point where, like I maybe I don't know maybe ten years ago or so, like where like it, it, it in in Asia like there's a there's a certain cultural expectation of, of being you know like being humble and being mm -hmm. showing humility, and I don't think I I really got that for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, Especially when you're young, you know, you just think, well, you know, rock and roll, you know. Um, but uh, so I think that's the biggest thing I've changed about myself is that is that I've tried to be more humble. Um, and uh, and in, in this environment in Taiwan, I, I feel like that's really been a, a benefit, you know. Like let your let your work or let your um, your actions um, speak for themselves you know and and, and you don't have to uh, beat your chest so much um Just so people, much <laughs> people, will, people will appreciate that and will identify that so um so yeah that's what i would say yeah. it's the same here too it's the same here and also it, it it me in my situation it caused me to actually take hidden skills that i didn't even know i had mm -hmm. and make it useful out here and I think that's another reason why a lot of long-term expats um, feel a sense of value. They feel a sense of uh, contribution to the society out here. And uh, when I mean out here, I mean, you know, maybe not only out here, if you live here in Taiwan, you can be living in Japan or Korea in the same, the same situation. Hopefully that our presence in this type of environment that we're not common, or people who look like us or sound us are common, it can actually show people here local that they have things that we need to learn, we need to uh, learn to cultivate in some ways, and that hopefully will make a cultural bridge that can hopefully carry our whole humanity into a better, better future. And, you know, we mentioned a little bit on how being out here in Taiwan, we have our awareness level, what's going on with the neighbors next door, you know, and uh, stuff like that. We have to be aware of it. We have to stay cognitive of what we will do, because if a situation does come down here, we have to make a choice. I'm not putting I'm not trying to put words out here right now, but this is just something that that people like you and I are, especially now, especially in the foreign communities, we are real bringing this up. What have you noticed then, especially from um, a perspective as, as, as an educator? How do you think that you have worked to change some of the thinking that the locals here have been raised with and uh, kind of like you maybe upset at it or add some nuance or, or some additional plus to the way they are thinking or feeling? Mm. Well, I think, um, especially when I'm teaching my, um, like my senior high school students, um, especially when they, when they're just about to, to graduate and go off to their, to their colleges and uh, many of them will study abroad and stuff. Um, I, I have a, a sort of a, a phrase that I use a lot and, and I, I tell them, um, you know, Taiwan is a small place and it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's a wonderful place, but it's, it's it's small and and it's very easy to uh, to get trapped in a bubble. So I, I often tell students not to live in, in a bubble, you know. And I'm uh, I think you can take the, the local news as a, as an example, right? Like the, the Taiwanese news, in my opinion, is not is not the, the greatest when it comes to exposing what's going on, what's going on in the world. Um, I think it's it's sort of gotten better, but. I think there's too many stories about, you know, uh, an, some night market vendor or, <laughs> like, uh, you know, this this celebrity was caught with with uh, so and so, and and I mean those things have have its place, and uh, you know, the United States has the same thing. They have their their gossip uh, news or whatever, um, but just 
being aware of what's going on in the world and being conscious of, of, of the things that maybe that, that are not a part of Taiwan, but that have, have global implications. Um, so that's what I've, that's one of the things I really tried to, to drive home with students is, is to essentially not live in a bubble. Um, because I think it's, I think it's important, especially when you live in a, in a place like Taiwan, it's so small. Um, it's really easy to just, you know, get trapped in, in local news and, and, and bury your head in the sand and, and not know what's going on. Yeah, that, that's true. You know, you know, James, uh, I can keep going, but um, I just want to just bring in here for a short while. And uh, maybe we can do this again, maybe in about a month or so and see if anything has changed in our points of views. And um, hopefully things have got a little bit better, kind of got, have gotten a little bit better. Sure, no problem. Thanks, James. Hey, guys, you know, thank you for joining us here. And then we'll be right back very soon. Take care.